Welcome to ECE 320 Electronics 1 for Fall 2020. This is kind of a fun course, a course I really look forward to. Essentially this course is the interfacing. If you have something wimpy like a computer, you need electronics to connect the computer to the outside world. You either need the sensors taking the outside world and connect with the computer so it can read binary signals, 0 volts, 5 volts, as to whether a light is turned on or the temperature is above 60 degrees. Um, you can also use analog inputs to find out what the actual temperature is, how much uh, how strong the magnetic fields are, how strong the wind's blowing. Then there's the output. I need to interface the computer, which is fairly wimpy, to something that takes power, like a motor or a speaker. Um, there we've got transistors and op amps to crank up the power so that 5 volts and 20 milliamps from the op amp, or the microprocessor, can now drive a motor at 12 volts and 20 amps. That's what electronics is. It's really the interfacing between the computer and the world. You don't actually have to have computers. For example, we got to the moon without computers. You can do everything analog with electronics. Uh, computers are really useful. And this class is how you actually connect the computer to the real world. So it's a very hands-on, very applied class, a class I really enjoy. Now, a little bit of background. On this class, everything is on Bison Academy. That's a website that has a large number of classes in the ECE program. So this is what Bison Academy looks like. It has about a dozen different courses, uh, lab supplies we'll talk about in just a little bit. If you click on 320, Digital Electronics, you get to this class. This is the home page for ECE 320 Electronics 1. On this page, you've got the entire semester laid out. We're going to start talking about semiconductors, that's things like silicon, um, and with that you can build temperature sensors, light sensors, and that's really about it. If you take two pieces of silicon and put them together, you get a PN junction. With that I can build diodes. Uh, diodes can produce light, that's an LED. I can use diodes to convert AC to DC, build max min circuits, do fuzzy logic, uh, like how a subway op operator would drive a subway. I can implement functions, like y equals the square root of x. Do that with hardware rather than software. Um, then we'll kind of move into transistors. Transistors are switches in this class. I can take something wimpy, like a microprocessor, and use a transistor as a switch to turn on something that takes more power, like a motor. Turn the motor on and off. If I use an H-bridge, that's four transistors. I can make the motor go full speed forward. I can make it go backwards. Um, with some op amps, I can do things like take temperature, convert temperature to 0 volts, 5 volts, nice logical levels, and say, is it above 5 degrees? If it is above 5 degrees, turn the motor on. Um, I can convert DC to AC. That's kind of how the inverters work on electric cars. I've got the DC battery. The motors nowadays are AC. I've got to convert DC to AC. Frequency is speed, uh, lead angles torque. You basically need a DC to AC converter. Again, that's what you do with transistors, and, and we cover that in this class. We finally end the, end the uh, class on how you build AND gates, OR gates, flip-flops at the transistor level. So that's kind of where the course is heading. In terms of the resource here in Bison Academy, there is quite a bit. All the day's lectures are laid out for you, so you can see what's going to be coming up throughout the semester. The lecture notes are posted on here. So if I click on one of these, like AC to DC converters, that day's lecture will appear. And this is what we're covering that day, so you don't really have to take notes by hand. All the lecture notes are here and available uh, eventually. There they are. In portrait format. I found this is a lot easier if you want to print out the lecture notes. If you want to do landscape mode, for whatever reason. Uh, usually in class, landscape works a little bit better for the displays. Same lecture notes, just reformatted for landscape format. And kind of go through the day's lecture. Over the summer, I've also made videos, gobs and gobs of videos. Each lecture has a YouTube video where you can sit there and click on it, and that's what we'll be covering in class. Typically in class, we'll spend about half an hour going over a topic like an AC to DC converter, the theory, go over a couple examples. We'll then give a handout for you to work on. And then spend about five minutes with the students going over the handout, working on the problem. Then we'll go over it in class. Like in this case, here's a circuit. 
Calculate the voltage of V1 and V2, both DC and AC. And we'll get to that in lecture number eight. Uh, it's not posted yet, but shortly I'll also have a YouTube video where we go over that. And then the homeworks are also posted so you can see the homeworks throughout the semester. Now, the intent of this class is to set it up so that you can take the class any way you like. If you would like to take the class by uh, showing up to the normal lecture time, that's great. Uh, we'll have the lecture running. We'll be going over the lecture notes. Um, then going over handout uh, every week. We'll go out the homework sets. Then we'll go over the homework at the end of the week, typically on Wednesdays. Again, that's how the normal class will run. It will also be run as simulcast. Um, at the beginning of the semester, we'll send out a link. So you can sit there and follow the class online if you want to view it live on, on Zoom. If you'd like to take the class remotely, that's also fine. Again, everything in class is presented. This is the day's lecture. Uh, here's the handout shortly. Here's the solution to the handout. Here's the homework set. If you'd like to take the class remotely and not having to not bother driving to campus, find a parking spot, walk across campus, getting to class, that's wonderful too. Uh, however works for you is how this class is set up. Any way you want to take it is fine with me. So going into the first class, um, some information on it. I guess I forgot to introduce myself. Um, hi, I'm Jake Lauer, the instructor for the class. The class time is Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11 a.m. at Pseudo 27. Thursday is 11.30 in Van Ness 101. The labs, this class has open labs. There's not really a scheduled lab time. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, labs are really done usually um, on your own. We'll give you a lab kit, uh, but again, I'll talk about that just a little bit. My office hours will be 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Zoom every day. Normally in class, during class times, I'll be, of course, in class, either there or remotely. Um, but if you have questions, again, any day of the week, you're welcome to come see me during office hours. I um, also check my email fairly often, so just send me, shoot me an email, and I may or may not get back to you right away. If I'm in the middle of grading, it might be a little bit later. Definitely I'll be online between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. on Zoom, though. The text for this class. If you go to Amazon, you can buy all sorts of textbooks that are like four years out of date, or four years old, for about seven dollars. And if we go back, if you click on resources, here's a couple textbooks that you can get. Um, for example, see so here's Jager. This is a used book on Amazon. The edition doesn't matter. Uh, here you can buy a paperback edition for $4. If you get last year's edition or a couple older ones, um, this one's available for, that's $4 shipping. Yeah, that's too expensive. Here's a, oh, geez, these are expensive. Uh, well, any electronics book works pretty well. Again, diodes, transistors, they haven't changed since 1960. So don't worry about what edition you buy. Um, all they really care about is the content. But the kind of the game they play with the publishers is they change the homework problems in the back of the book, and that way you have to buy the current edition. Well, I post my own solutions on Bison Academy. That way I can post the solutions as well without violating any copyright, copyright. What that means is that any edition works. You can also get free textbooks. Electronic Tutorials is actually a really good reference for electrical engineering. Uh, Wikipedia is actually pretty good too. Uh, in high school you're told don't use Wikipedia. It works well in electrical engineering because transistors aren't that controversial. Not too many people are for and against transistors. You know, they just are. So Wikipedia is a pretty good reference. Electronics is just a great reference. It's free. That's a big plus. Uh, plus, this actually covers a lot of courses in electrical engineering. If we look at, um, sure, how about logic gates? There we go, transistors. You can pull up uh, lecture notes that go over transistors, and these are actually pretty good notes. So again, you need some sort of reference that goes with a class. Otherwise, what a lot of students have found is that everything they need is on Bison Academy. If it's not, just do a, a Google search, or actually, a, usually a YouTube search. We'll find what you need. 
Um, so that's the textbook and the online reference, the Bison Academy Electronic Tutorials. I kind of mentioned this uh, earlier. The model for this class, we're using HyFlex this semester, and probably for the next couple of years is my guess. What that means is you can take the class any way that works for you. If you'd like to take the class in person, you're welcome to do so. If you want to live stream the class, we'll have that ready. If you'd like to take the class online, saying, I've got other conflicts during the day, I'd like to take the class whenever it fits my schedule. Again, the lecture notes are available online, YouTube videos are online, my office hours are 6 to 8 p.m. every night if you need help. Uh, kind of the goal, my goal, is to make online as convenient as I can for you. Again, kind of a sidelight, with coronavirus running around, not showing up to class, taking the class online is actually really, really good. Typically what happens in my classes is the first week or two weeks of the semester, I have 100% attendance, and then attendance drops off as people start realizing that all the material they need is available in Bison Academy. Well, this year I've added to it. I've got the day's lectures, I've got lecture notes, YouTube videos, daily handouts, YouTube discussions of the handouts, homework sets, solutions to previous homework sets, all online. My goal is to make online as convenient as I can for you, but it's your choice. If you like the online convenience, great. Um, you're, you don't have to show up to class, I'm not taking attendance. If you want to show up in person, that's also wonderful. If you want to live stream it, that'll work. Again, whatever works for you, that's kind of what our job, or my job at the summer was, giving you options for taking the class. Uh, what you might wonder about are how quizzes are run. Every week we have a quiz in this class. The quiz is either in class, you show up, take the quiz, turn in the paper, um, or you can take it online remotely. The quizzes will be on Blackboard, and typically they're made available 8 a.m. on the day of the quiz, uh, anytime between 8 a.m. and midnight. Once you start the quiz, you've got two hours to complete it. Again, online is a little bit less convenient. You don't have a hard copy to start with. Plus, you have to take a picture of the quiz when you're done and upload it. That's why it's two hours for online. In class, is usually like an hour, hour and a half. Uh, but then you've got the convenience. Whenever you want to take the quiz, go right ahead. Just the one caveat. Uh, quizzes are individual efforts. Uh, please, please, please do not work in groups on the quizzes. Last semester we had a couple of people doing that and they actually wound up giving them negative points on their quizzes to tell them, please stop working together. If you do the homeworks, you follow the class, you should be able to do the quizzes. Uh, plus you have a second shot at the quizzes. The final exam is basically the same quizzes one more time. So you've got this semester's homeworks, you've got last semester's homeworks, you've got solutions, you've got videos, you've got handouts. You should be able to do the quizzes without other people's help. And actually, if you do get other people's help, you probably don't have time in two hours. And if your answers are too similar, you're going to lose points. So you'll please do work together. Or, correction, please do not work together. But again, it's completely your choice how you want to take the class. Online, in person, uh, live, live streaming, whatever works for you. In terms of the content for the course, uh, 320 is digital electronics using transistors, diodes, op amps. 321 is analog electronics. Now a plug for 321. 320 is required for all electrical engineers. It's required for all computer engineers. Um, everybody needs to know how transistors work. Computer engineers typically have binary outputs. You know, switches either true or false, you know, like, the, like all the Sith Lords, um, black and white, formulated against me. With that, I can turn on the motor full speed, turn it off. Uh, a little bit of trickery, I can make it go backwards full speed, turn it off, but everything's binary. 321 deals with analog electronics. If you want the computer to ever talk to the real world and know something that's not binary, you need 321, analog electronics, either on the sensor side, bring in the data, filtering to avoid aliasing, or drive a motor at variable speeds, drive a heater at variable speeds. That's analog electronics. So really, computer engineers and electrical engineers benefit from both Electronics 1 and Electronics 2. Electronics 2, analog electronics, is required for electrical engineers. It's optional for computer engineers. If you're a computer engineer, it counts as a two-credit technical elective. If you take Circuits 2 as well, Circuits 2 is a four-credit course. Uh, that works out really well. So you have a four-credit Circuits 2, two credits Electronics 2. Together, make six credits. That fills up the six credits you need for your tech electives.
So I would definitely encourage all computer engineers to take electronics too. Um, electrical engineers, you have to take electronics too. But that's week 10 or 11 through 16 for this semester. Kind of a similar format. Some resources that you need to take the class. Uh, first off, you need a calculator that does complex numbers. I highly recommend the HP 35S. There's also a free app on your cell phone called Free42. Free42 is an HP 42 calculator. That's free, hence the name. Uh, my opinion, the best calculator ever made. They sell for $500 on eBay. It's a free app on your cell phone. With that, you can just whip through complex numbers really easily. What I found is that having a calculator that does complex numbers and is programmable is worth about 10 points in midterms. Typically, tests are a race. You're racing trying to get to the answer. And a calculator that doesn't fight you is worth points. Uh, the HPs let you breeze through the calculations when you start dealing with complex numbers. Uh, breezing through it, again, means you get done with the test sooner. You can check your answers. Do you have more time? Honestly, I think it's worth about 10 points having an HP calculator on a test. Uh, so definitely, I would recommend getting an HP calculator, getting used to it. It's a little bit weird. Once you figure it out, though, it is fast. Uh, we used to have calculator races back when I was in school. HPs will dust a TI. Um, but if you really want to use a TI, that also works. Something that works for you that does complex numbers. Uh, second thing you need is an ability to make videos, uh, preferably so you can post them on YouTube. On the labs, one of the ways to demonstrate the lab is to take a picture of your circuit working and to send me the, the picture. Or you can log in during office hours and demonstrate it that way. Um, you need a soldering iron. Again, this is something all electrical engineers should have. You should have a soldering iron and a multimeter. You can get them from about $29. I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, but you'll need the multimeter in this class. Um, you don't necessarily need it if you're doing the labs in the ECE building. If you're doing the labs at home, which you'll probably have to do this semester, a good multimeter is really helpful. Multimeters cost about $10. If you get a multimeter with a soldering iron kit, it's $29. You can talk about that in a set. In a sec. Uh, fourth thing you'll need is electronics kit that has a breadboard, resistors, capacitors, um, five by five timers, stuff like that. That's actually going to be free. Jeff Erickson, our technician, just ordered those today, and we'll be giving them out to all students in circuits one, circuits two, electronics one, electronics two, the same as electronics one. Uh, they're fifteen dollar kits on eBay. Again, we're ordering them department's paying for them. Just the idea is labs are going to be a real problem this semester, trying to meet in, in, in the lab. Uh, with the social distancing, I'm not sure that's going to work. The labs in Ely or the STEM building are booked throughout the day. The open lab that we used to have in ECE is limited uh, to the number of people in there. You can only have four people in the room at a given time. You almost have to do the labs on your own. So we're going to be giving out lab kits. So you can do the labs on your own. All you need is a USB somewhere, either a USB battery, a computer with a USB port. These are powered off the USB port, and then you can build everything else uh, from there. The other thing you need is a circuit lab account. That's on circuitlab.com. Again, the ECE department has a license for circuit lab. Anybody with an NDSU email address can use it for free. So log into Circuit Lab, use your NDSU email address. You can do that right now and get into Circuit Lab. It's a really slick, really nice circuit simulator. I really like it. In terms of grading, the grading in 320 will have weekly quizzes, homework, and a final. The weekly quizzes are half your grade, uh, homework 25%, final 25%, no midterms. We cover so much material in this class that really just limiting it to a quiz every week seems to work pretty well. The weekly quizzes cover the homeworks. So typically what you do is we'll give a lecture on topics, give out a homework set. Uh, the homework, you turn it in, we go over the homework, and then there's a quiz on the same topic, on the homework topics. The homework is your chance to practice on those problems, hone your skills. The quiz is where I kind of do a spot check. If you're doing the homework and you're keeping up, quiz should be no problem. If you're in a group and you're giving the group moral support, uh, then you're going to struggle with the quizzes. So as long as you're doing the homework, you're paying attention, doing the handouts in class, ought to be pretty easy on the quizzes. Um, in terms of the labs, 
There is no lab per se in this class. The homeworks are part of the are the the labs are part of the homework. So typically on the homework, what I'll do is do something like design an AC to DC converter. That's the anal analysis. You'll then go into Circuit Lab, build the circuit in Circuit Lab, and check: Do I have the right voltages? Do I have the right ripple? Do I have the right frequency? Once you're done checking in Circuit Lab, you can then go build the lab using your electronics kit and verify it. When you build it and verify it, if you have an oscilloscope, you can look at the waveforms. Otherwise, what you can do is I can use the voltmeter and measure the DC voltage. That's the average voltage. I can measure the AC voltage. That'll be the ripple. And if I take the signal and tie it to a speaker through a 200 ohm resistor, it'll make a chirping sound like beep using your cell phone. I can use a piano tuner cell phone app and measure the frequency. And that's how you verify the circuit. If I have the right frequency, right voltage, DC, right voltage, AC, it's probably right. The final exam for the class is, let's go back. Uh, slide it down. There we go. There's the final exam. It's on Thursday, October 29th and Friday, October 30th. Again, it's your choice. You can be in class or you can take it on Blackboard uh, anytime between 8 a.m. and midnight those two days. The first part covers diodes and semiconductors. The second part covers transistors and op amps. So that's kind of how the course is laid out. The second thing I kind of want to talk about is how fall semester is going to run at NDSU. If you go under Bison Academy, under labs and senior design. These are some of the things that we kind of recommend everybody has. The labs this semester are going to be a little bit difficult. Again, from social distancing, we can't get 40 people in the lab at the same time. So it's really going to help if you can do your labs on your own. Towards that end, we've got some recommendations. Again, any electrical engineer, electrical computer engineer, should have a soldering iron, powered breadboard, oscilloscope. Well, oscilloscopes are kind of optional. They're kind of fun. I have two of them. Uh, function generator, pick board if you're taking embedded systems, and circuit lab. Some of the recommendations, if you click on these soldering irons, here's some of our recommendations. If you would like to solder and you just don't have the you know, finances to buy a soldering iron, we do have some soldering irons we can loan out. Just stop by 209 Jeff Erickson's office and check out a soldering iron. Typically, the first two weeks of embedded systems, people use soldering irons. The end of senior design, they start using soldering irons. Uh, the rest of everyone else doesn't really need them, but they are available. A uh, second option is you can use soldering irons in room 217. We have four of them set up in there. With social distancing, that's all we can get in the room. Check out a key from Jeff Erickson. If there's not less than four people in that room, you can use it in that room. Otherwise, you could buy yourself a kit. Again, I would recommend, again, there is no textbook in this class. Textbooks tend to be, you know, 200 bucks. Spend $30 on a, on a soldering iron. This kit has a soldering iron. It's got a multimeter. That's the two things that you really need. Uh, tweezers, electrical tape, solder, um, stuff everybody needs. Uh, this is a second recommendation. If you click on this, this takes you to something I found on Amazon. If this is sold out, just do an Amazon search for soldering iron. Uh, they sell hundreds of them. Oh, this one has free returns too. So this is a kit that you know I'd recommend. If you would like to go a little bit uh, higher end, there's a $39 soldering iron. This doesn't have a multimeter. You'd have to buy the multimeter separately. Those are like $10. Um, you get a $97 soldering iron. The one that I have, because I'm special, is the $350 soldering iron. This one's pretty nice. It's got a lot of power. It really speeds up soldering. I do a lot of soldering, so I spent the money. Plus, I'm not a student, so I actually have some cash. Um, if you're a poor student, you know we do have options for you, like the free option. You definitely need a soldering iron and a multimeter, though. In terms of oscilloscopes, oscilloscopes aren't really necessary. You can get by with just a uh, voltmeter. What you can also do is that you can just download a cell phone app, uh, like if I have a piano tuner. What the piano tuner will do is it'll tell you the frequency of a signal. 
take the signal tied to a speaker through a 200 ohm resistor, and it'll start buzzing. Uh, on the cell phone app, if I have the piano tuner, it'll tell me the frequency it's buzzing at. And it's actually really useful, uh, fairly accurate. We use that embedded systems a lot. A uh, higher end solution is the $88 oscilloscope. This is what I use in class. I've got two of those. Uh, this just came out this summer. I'm kind of drilling over it. It's the $182 version. Um, it's a touchscreen oscilloscope with USB interface that you can download the images to your computer. Uh, I'm envious. I want one. Again, oscilloscopes aren't really necessary. You can get by without them. They are kind of nice. Oscilloscopes are used in all these classes. If I go to a powered breadboard, uh, this is one that's actually free. What Jeff Erickson's doing is we have a bunch of these powered breadboards. It's got your 5 volts, plus minus 15 volts, and the breadboarding area. Uh, we have, I think, 30 of those in the department you can check out in, in electronics. What we're giving out to every student in 320, 206, I think 311, senior design, are these kits. Uh, this is a kit that has your breadboard. It's got transistors, capacitors, LEDs, lots of colored LEDs because LEDs are pretty, resistors, wiring pack, this guy right here. What that does is it plugs into a USB into your computer or battery. This part plugs into your breadboard. So what you now have is 5 volts and ground. So the red lines will be 5 volts, blue is ground, top and bottom. And with that, I now have power and ground. I can start building my circuits. Uh, really, 5 volts and ground is all you need in this class. Uh, higher voltages will make a motor spin faster, make an LED brighter. For the concepts, you can get by just 5 volts and ground. So really, that's all you need in this class. Again, that's free to all students, so you don't have to worry about buying it. That order just went out today, so it should be available, I'm guessing, uh, mid-August. And if you want to fancy your breadboard, you know, for 100 bucks, you can buy one. Uh, we just did soldering irons. Oh, function generators. For function generators, this is a way to generate a signal that you can test. Again, a couple different options. The free option, I like free, is if you have a cell phone with a headphone jack. Um, sorry, Apple owners, you need a Android cell phone for this. Use the Download an app for signal generator, and this will produce a sine wave, square wave, triangle wave, sawtooth wave, random wave. Vary the frequency, vary the voltage. This will output roughly a 1 volt peak to peak waveform. Amplify it. Uh, this was somebody's senior design project. They just built an amplifier to take the 1 volt peak to peak from your cell phone. Amplify it so I have 10 volts peak to peak and you know, 2 or 3 amps. Uh, just the cell phone right here, along with an op amp, will amplify it. I can use the cell phone to generate my frequencies, my waveforms, pretty much everything you need for 320, 321. The $18, actually the 30 cent solution, is buy a 555 timer and add it to this kit. The kits that we're handing out actually have a 555 timer. We splurge, we spend an extra 30 cents on you. Uh, with that, you can build a triangle wave, saw, sawtooth wave, um, square wave, pulse width modulation all with a 555 timer. Uh, the high pollutant way is for 99 bucks you can get yourself a signal generator. 555 timer is actually better for electronics because it teaches knowledge of electronics as well. Um, this teaches that you can push a button. And function generators are useful in many classes. The other thing you'll need in this class is Circuit Lab. Again, Circuit Lab is really slick. I really like it. This is a circuit simulator uh, that will, you can draw your circuit kind of using drag and drop. I can then analyze the circuit, find the time waveforms. So if I don't have an oscilloscope, I can use Circuit Lab to show me what the waveform looks like. I can save my waveforms. To register for Circuit Lab, go into register and use your NDSU email address. So we have a license, so anybody from NDSU or with an NDSU email address, can use it for free. Uh, before the semester starts, log into Circuit Lab. And with it, it's just drag and drop. We're going to talk about this a little bit later. You just grab your component, stick it in, double click on it, and I can make that a 200 ohm resistor. 
Uh, scroll down, you've got MOSFETs, transistors, relays. If you're taking 275, um, here's your JK flip-flops, D flip-flops, T flip-flops, SR flip-flops, and or not exclusive or are your logic gates. That's for 275. And maybe control systems, you can do this. Ooh, yeah, you can do that for control systems. And other things. So again, a really nice circuit simulator. If you want to run it then, give you one example, don't call this quits. I can sit there and say, maybe. Come back. I can say simulate. I want to do a time domain simulation. You can check the DC voltages. That's what we'll be doing at the start of the class. Uh, later on, we can sit there and see if the waveform is variable, like an AC to DC converter, a buck converter, 555 timer. I can look at time varying signals and see, like here, this is a sawtooth wave generator. The orange is the output, that's a VC, and VY are these pulses. And here's the voltage of VY and there's voltage of VC. So that's 320 Electronics 1. Again, kind of a fun class, a class that I really look forward to. Um, class that I kind of hope you have fun in. But it's a course that covers how to interface computers to the real world. And that's the introduction to 320. I uh, look forward to seeing you this semester and hope you enjoy the course.